Hey guys, it's Mr. Stark again, and this is the uh, start-stop circuit. So what I've shown you here is uh, basically uh, your initial start-stop circuit, and there's a few components that you need to be familiar with that you're, you, know, you may not be already, but obviously we have a stop button, so you're familiar with that. The movable portion is underneath the screws as the symbol should be. You have a start button and you have the movable uh, portion above the screws. You have a coil because the symbol for a coil is a circle. A couple lines and we call on this M for motor starter. You have an open contact M that belongs to that coil. So that M lives there. And then you have an overload, normally close contact, which is actually part of the motor starter. And then you can actually see we have our source voltage coming in. And after we complete this circuit, we go home on neutral. Now, this particular circuit is 120 volts. We haven't done any projects with 120 volts yet. So I'll show you down here. This is where my 120 volt source comes in. And I'm using blue for the hot, white for the neutral. I ran out of white for the rest of the circuit, so I'll be using uh, the blue coming into the white as white. Not a big deal. <clears throat> uh, so what we have? We have a stop-start station. And it's the first time we've actually had the stop and the start wired in the same enclosure. So one thing I'd like you to take note of is... There's a jumper between the second screw of the stop and the first screw of the start. And how that's represented, if I had to kind of show you this on the whiteboard, is that jumper is actually this cable right there. And the manufacturers will usually give you a little piece of uh, a jumper. It's a, it looks like a piece of copper uh, flat jumper between those two screws because they know if you're using it for part of the stop-start circuit, you need that jumper. So they provide it from the factory because 99% of the time you'll keep it in there because you need it. So that actually piece of the drawing, if it were brand new, it would be there for you. It's not because I took it out because I modified my circuits and I just simply replace it with a piece of wire. So something you need to know about those when you get a brand new one, you'll have that jumper in there. So if I trace this circuit out, I've got a wire coming from my feed into the first screw of my stop. Let's cross that off. Wire from the feed, first screw of the stop, check. So that wire is done. We already know we've got this little jumper in there. That's this little blue wire. Now, if I look off that same screw, which is the first screw of the start button, I'm coming off and I'm going into this open contact on my motor starter. Well, I'm using a red wire for that. You can see I got a red wire coming off the same screw. That red wire comes all the way over. Deep in here, there's two screws. These screws in the back. These two screws represent these two numbers on my motor starter, three and two. Right now, I have that wire placed on number two. So I'm gonna put a number two here, and I'm gonna put a number three here, because those numbers represent my holding circuit for that motor starter. That's what we call it, a holding circuit, which is nothing more than auxiliary contact and you'll see how that's going to work in a second. So this wire is actually done. We determined that that red wire came into number two, and that red wire also came off the first screw of the start button. Red wire off of number two. Here's number two. It's on the bottom, so it's the front. And it comes off the first screw of my start button. Now we have to come back around and finish the circuit. We're going to come off of number three, off the motor starter, back to the second screw of the start button. So we're going to come off of number three. So number three is a top number, which means it's the top screw. 
I'm using a blue wire. Trace that back to my start button and it comes back to that uh, screw. So here we are. There's that blue wire. It came back. That's done. I still need another wire from here to the coil. So that's a cool thing. From the factory, they actually provide that wire right here, this big red one. They give you this from the factory because they know you need it. This wire sneaks around the back of the starter and sneaks up to the front and goes to the coil. These two screws represent the coil for this starter. So I'm going to draw screws in here so you're aware that they actually exist. So that actually takes care of that jumper. <clears throat> that, that little wire that's going around the back, that's done. So that's that wire. Once again, we come back to the coil. We, we're leaving the other side of the coil with this wire. This wire goes from the opposite side of the coil into the overload. That's this factory supplied wire. It leaves the coil, swings up underneath, and goes into this terminal, which is the, let's just call it the left side of your overload, as far as your drawing goes. Once again, there's that wire. From the coil to the overload, we have that because the factory provided that for us. The only thing we need now is to leave the overload, which is normally closed, always is, and back home. That's this blue wire. Here's the other screw to my overload, normally closed contact. Between here and here is normally closed. I have that wire going home, back to neutral. When I put my cover on, cover has to be on. When I hit the start button, you're going to see this plunger get pulled in, which means the coil is energized and it's magnetized and it's sucking down that uh, linkage. See, got pulled in, you heard it click. I hit the stop button, it's released. I hit the start button, it's engaged. I hit the stop button again, we dropped it out. I hit the start button again, we pulled it in. Now, what's cool about this motor starter is if I wanted to, I could put my own meter on this and I could test for continuity across the incoming power phase and the outcoming power phase and we usually represent that with L1 to T1. So I should have continuity right now, you'll hear my meter, between A phase coming in and A phase going out. And what you'll see in a second here, let's put this on ohms. Now it's going to beep. So right now I'm testing for continuity from L1 to T1, which is incoming power to outgoing load. That's B phase and last C phase. So we know that my motor starter is pulled in because I have continuity all the way through my motor starter. If I hold it here, see if I can get two hands on this at the same time and hit the stop button you'll see that I lost continuity between my incoming and outgoing so you know one way to determine if you've got power is obviously make sure your motor starters pulled in so the next thing I'd like to show you in conjunction with this overload thing we've been talking about, which you're going to get a lesson on soon, is these three devices are your overloads. If I took out this screw and this screw, this overload would pull out and I would have no continuity between incoming A phase and outgoing A phase. So the overload protects the motor. I've got three of them, one in series with each ungrounded conductor. And that allows the protection of all three windings that are in the motor. So if the motor decides that 
you know, there's a problem and it wants to overload and it's got excessive current and it's having an issue, these things will uh, open and actually the way these overloads work is there's actually solder inside this little uh, tube, if you will, and it heats up upon overload. And we know what happens with solder when we heat it up, it melts. And when it melts, it's a, it allows this little tiny wheel, there's a tiny little wheel in here, it allows that to spin. Once that spins, it lets go of this lever. And then it trips the uh, mechanism in the overload and opens the overload contact so that you lose your incoming power. And then you hit this as a reset. I'll show you that when we get to lab. So we hit the start button. Right now the, the motor starter is engaged because I don't see the plunger. If I initiate the overload, my contactor dropped out which means I got no more power coming out of here. I'm just simulating this by triggering the switch. I could reset it and you'll see that it comes back to normal. You're going to see this on another video. I just want to give it to you twice. So simple circuit, four wires really to get this thing up and running. Uh, two of them are provided from the factory and start stop, motor starter, square D, uh, NEMA, heavy duty motor starter and there's your basic circuit to get that thing running so hope you got something out of that and i'll see you in the next video